JavaScript's Fetch API provides a pretty simple and clean way to make HTTP requests via JavaScript. It is way more flexible and way more usable than the old way of making requests using XHRs or XML HTTP requests, which would include a whole bunch of conditional checks and nested callbacks. If we look at the equivalent written with the Fetch API, it's not only much shorter and easier to understand, but it's based on promises. So the whole point of Fetch is to make HTTP requests via JavaScript as easy as possible. It's not perfect, but it's much better than the old way. Uh, we need a place to make HTTP requests too. I'm gonna to be using this JSON placeholder API. It's not the most exciting thing ever, but it pretty much never changes, which is the good news. Every time I make a YouTube video with an API, the API immediately completely overhauls things and breaks my video. Okay, so this is the JSON that we get back when I just request it in the browser. I wanna do this via JavaScript. The first step is to call fetch. And then I provide the URL that I'm fetching, this variable right here. And if I run this in the terminal, we see that we get a promise returned. Fetch is promise-based. So in order to work with it, I have two choices. I either use dot then, or I'll write an async function. I'll start by using a dot then. So I'm gonna do a dot then, and I'll call this response. And why don't we just console.log response when that finishes? I'll run this, here we are. I get a response object back containing the headers and what looks like the body, but if I open up the body, I can't actually see the data that I'm expecting to see. The way that we fetch is basically a two-step process. We call fetch, and then once we get a response object back, there's actually a second method that we're gonna call, you can see on the slides here, response.json, and response.json also returns a promise. So I'm going to revise this here instead of console.logging my response. I'll return response.json, which again returns a promise. So I'll chain on another dot then. And then when that finishes, I'll use a second dot then and I'll console.log our data in the callback. And here's our data. So a common question is, why is it a two-step process? Why don't we get all of the data at once when we first call fetch? The answer has to do with the fact that fetch is designed to handle streaming data that comes in over time, not necessarily all at once. So the response headers might come back quickly, but the body of the response, which could be a really big piece of JSON, for example, could take longer to arrive in its entirety. Response.json returns a promise that will be resolved once all of the body content has been read and parsed as JSON. Now, what about error handling? We can add in a dot catch, and I'll just call this parameter error and I'll call or ERR I'll console.log ERR we shouldn't get anything right now but let's request a resource that doesn't exist and try it again it doesn't look like my error was caught instead I'm getting this empty data from this line right here so what's going on unfortunately the way that fetch is set up um, is that the promise that it returns won't be rejected if there's a simple HTTP error it will only reject if there's a network failure or if the request is denied. So this generates a basic HTTP error, right? A resource not found. So we can see over here, we get a 404. This dot catch won't run. Instead, this code runs. So we have to do a little bit of extra error handling. Inside of this dot then, we wanna make sure that the response came back okay. And there's a very easy property to check if response.ok, or let's check if not response.ok. If that's the case, we'll throw a new error, we'll include the response.status, and by throwing that error, we'll then be able to catch it down here. Otherwise, I will return response.json. So now, we are catching that error, as you can see here, our HTTP error that we threw with a status of 404. So remember that the original fetch promise won't be rejected just because of an HTTP status issue. It's only for network errors or for a complete network failure or the, the request being denied. But a 404 or something along those lines, we have to manually check to see if the response is okay or not before returning response.json or throwing an error, which then will be caught down here. So let's go back to a valid one, slash users, and now I'm getting my data. Okay, this is great, but most people today prefer to rewrite this using async and await. And that could look something like this. Async function, get users, try this, 
await fetch of the URL when that promise is eventually resolved, hopefully. Then we await response.json when that promise is eventually resolved, hopefully. We'll console.log the data. We'll catch any errors. Again, we have the same problem where we should check to see if the response is okay. It's still just the same fetch promise at the end of the day. So if we get a 404 or something at the moment, this is not going to handle that. So we can add in the same if not response.ok logic and throw a new error, which will then be caught down here. I'll end with a quick example of a post request. Everything we've done so far has been the default method, which is a get request. But we can provide after the URL, when we call fetch, a configuration object that includes things like a method property. So I'll set the method to post, any headers that I want in the request. So I'll, t I'll set the content type to application slash JSON, and then a body property, which will include the data. And in this case, I'm sending a post request to the slash users endpoint, basically to create a user. Here's my user data. I'm going to call my function create user, pass the data through. This is my function right here. I'm going to pass user data after I've stringified it and pass that through as the body. And then it's just a matter of awaiting response.json. Hopefully we get back something. And then we'll console.log that. And if something goes wrong, we have some basic error handling. And let me show you that it works. Here's the data I get back from the API with an ID. And that ID is really all we have to prove that it works for getting this back. So the key difference here is that I'm sending a post request, I'm including headers, and I'm including the body of the post request. And that's the very basics of using fetch. The key things that trip people up is that fetch itself returns a promise, which is expected, but also response.json returns a promise. And you either have to use two dot ends or we have to await both promises. The other thing that trips people up is the way that it handles errors, especially HTTP errors, and that you have to do a little bit of extra error handling yourself. Either way, it's a significant improvement over the old way, which nobody uses anymore, XHRs. So that's Fetch. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you're interested, head on over to my website, coltstill.com. There's a link below. And you can check out all sorts of JavaScript tips, CSS tips, articles, and even a free interactive course on using CSS Grid. And that's it. I'll see you next week.